good morning uh, now uh, in the last class we have finished the module 3 electronics and from today onwards we will be starting the new chapter uh, it is module 4 magnetism okay so this is the first class on the next chapter magnetism so magnetism as an introduction we know that this concept of magnetism and magnetic phenomena has uh, started in the last 6th century BC when tales of Miletus uh, observed the attractive power of magnets. You know that magnets have the attracting power. So it was that particular invention that um, led uh, to this uh, um, field called magnetism that is magnets on doll shows an attractive power so this led to a no new opening to the field of magnetism okay later chinese people out of china uh, uh, took over the research works on magnetism and then by around 80000 uh, many this magnetic compass was used for investigation purposes that is in order to know about uh, directions especially for ship navigation and all Later in the 16th century, William Gilbert, he was an English scientist and he studied the properties of magnets in detail and he established a, an important concept that is he observed that earth possess a magnetic field or he observed the presence of magnetic field around earth. Later from 18th century, this field of magnetism developed and now also we are learning more about magnetism. So this is actually... Uh, the history of uh, the earlier developments of uh, magnetism and so from 18th century this field has become effective and many researches has go is going on in this field of magnetism okay now let us study about the magnetic properties of materials okay now the basis for the study of magnetic properties of matter ties on the fact that matter the presence of matter modifies magnetic field produced by current so it is actually uh, what i will explain you the meaning we know that a matter is composed of atoms now inside the atom what you have nucleus and around the nucleus we will have negatively charged new electrons revolving okay so matter is composed of atoms with the electrons revolving around the nucleus now we know that these electrons are negatively charged particle at the same time they are revolving so it is a charged particle that is revolving and this will can be uh, considered as a circulating current which in turn can also be considered as a magnetic dipole possessing a magnetic moment so uh, matter is composed of atoms and in the atoms we have electrons revolving around the nucleus the electrons this revolving electrons are considered as a circulating current or they can also be considered as a magnetic dipole possessing a magnetic moment okay now this magnetic moment arises from the orbital motion and spin motion of electron you know that electrons can have both type of motions that is orbital motion and spin motion so both these motions that is orbital motion and a spin motion contributes towards the magnetic moment of electron and there is a peculiarity for this magnetic moment that is these magnetic moments they are un under random orientation random orientation means they are orienting in different directions okay uh, that is uh, so this random orientation of magnetic moment give rise to the presence of magnetic field in the matter okay so briefly uh, matter is composed of atoms and the atoms has got ele electrons revolving around the nucleus these uh, revolving electrons are considered as circulating current which can also be considered a magnetic dipole possessing magnetic moment and this magnetic moment are under random orientation and this random orientation of magnetic moment give rise to the presence of magnetic field okay also another note is that the magnetic moment it is proportional to angular moment of Murphy electron okay so uh, in addition to the contribution of orbital motion of electron to the magnetic moment that is what we have already told that is both these motions that is both orbital motion and spin motion contribute to total magnet con contribute to magnetic moment so the total magnetic moment of the electron will be the sum of contributions from spin and orbital angular moment and that is both orbital motion and spin motion of electron contribute to its magnetic moment now depending on the behavior of magnet in a matter in the magnetic field we have got three types of magnetism one is paramagnetism then diamagnetism then ferromagnetism today we will learn only about paramagnetism okay 
Paramatic materials are those substances which when placed in a magnetizing field get feebly magnetized. Feebly magnetized means weakly or lightly magnetized and this direction of magnetization will be in the direction of the magnetic field. So, uh, this paramatic substances, what are, what are they? Uh, these substances will get weakly magnetized or they will get feebly magnetized when placed in a magnetizing field. Also, the direction of magnetism developed in that material will be in the direction of the magnetizing field. Some examples are sodium, potassium, magnesium, aluminum, chromium, tin, platinum, iron chloride, copper sulfate, liquid oxygen, solutions of salts of iron and nickel, etc. Now, so study the definition of my paramagnetism, some examples and the properties. So, this is an important session. So, first the property is that, this first property is just the definition that we have already told. That is paramagnetic substance when placed in a magnetic field, occur feeble magnetization. In which direction? In the direction of magnetizing field. Okay. Now, the second one is that, in a non-uniform field, that is when a paramagnetic substance is placed in a non-uniform field, then this paramagnetic substance will have a tendency to move from weak to stronger field. This is illustrated in this example. So, consider a U-tube shown here. Now, this U-tube is filled with a paramagnetic liquid. Okay. Then, one of the limbs, limb, limb means this one this one this is called a limb okay so in between one of the limbs we have placed and one of the limb is placed between the poles of a magnet okay the other limb is made free so you have a u-tube and it is filled with the paramagnetic substance and one of the limb is subjected to uh, or it is placed between the poles of a magnet so this this limb it is under uh, the effect of strong magnetic field whereas this is not so what happens as per the definition the paramagnetic substance will move from weaker region to stronger region okay that is demonstrated in this experiment now another one is that if you are setting if you allow a paramagnetic substance or paramagnetic road to rotate between the poles of a strong magnet then it will align parallel to that field okay that is another property then the fourth one is that when a paramagnetic material is subjected to an external magnetizing field that is H then the intensity of magnetization I is small positive and directly proportional to H that is I proportional to H that is another one so I proportional to H where I is the intensity of magnetization and H is the magnetizing field. Another one is magnetic susceptibility that is represented as chi m that is equal to uh, that is um, I by H. This I by H is called as uh, man magnetic susceptibility. That is the ratio of intensity of magnetization to magnetic field, magnetizing field. And that value of chi m is also small and positive. It is independent of field but varies inversely with absolute temperature tau. That is chi m is inversely proportional to the absolute temperature tau. That is chi m proportional to 1 by 2. The graph is shown here. I along uh, y axis and h along x axis. Now, this one is known as Curie law. It is very important. So, study this uh, fifth property very well. So, Curie's law states that at constant temperature, magnetic susceptibility that is chi m is a constant and independent of magnetizing field. So, this particular property is, uh, is very important. So, uh, you will be asked to define Curie law along with the uh, uh, the expressions okay now sixth property that is relative permeability mu r equal to mu by mu zero so mu r is a relative permeability mu zero is the absolute permeability mu is the permeability of the medium okay so permeability of the medium mu to the permeability of free space mu zero is called relative permeability mu r it is slightly greater than unity that is mu r greater than one why because mu is greater than mu zero so this implies that field inside the paramagnetic material is slightly greater than the magnetizing field this means that a paramagnetic material will always have a tendency to pull in the lines of force when placed in a magnetic field so when placed in a magnetic field this paramagnetic material will always have a tendency to pull the field of line of force inside see here this diagram shows it okay so the, these six properties are very important next uh, one why what is the reason for paramagnetism this is the last session now uh, in a paramagnetic material there are permanent magnetic moments associated with it which we have already uh, 
told then the dipole moments associated with each molecule arise from orbital motion and spin motion of electron that also we told that is dipole moment associated with each molecule is the vector sum of orbital and spin moments okay then the spin matic moment of each electron is linked with the orbital matic moment of the same electron that is both this matic moment that is spin matic moment and orbital matic moment of the same electron is linked with each other and this will produce a total mantic moment this is how the total mantic moment arises now this mantic moment of an atom is determined only by electrons which occupy partially filled shells so we have we know that mantic moment of an electron arises from its spin motion and orbital motion and it is mainly determined by which type of electrons the electrons which occupy partially filled shells the electron spins and orbital angular momentum in outer shell what about the electron spin and in the outer shell they tend to orient themselves in opposite directions so as to compensate each other to make to the maximum possible action so this uh, total magnetic moment is contributed by which type of electrons electrons which occupy partially filled uh, shells whereas the electrons in the outer shell they just orient themselves in opposite directions so as to compensate each other so thus in short we can say that mantic moment of a free atom is due to uncompensated mantic moment of the outer electron the sentence is important that is in effect paramantism arises due to uncompensated mantic moment of electrons some electrons will stay will not get compensated so this paramantism arises out of those uncompensated mantic moment of electrons so this sentence is very important that is the cause of paramantism is that paramantism arises due to the uncompensated mantic moment of electrons if atoms have odd number of electrons then cancellation of moments will be incomplete and they will exhibit mantic moments which occupy partially filled shells so paramantism is mainly exhibited by odd number of electrons or atoms that have odd number of electrons why they have uncompensated mantic moments so only those atoms will exhibit paramantism so that's a, this particular paragraph is actually the reason or the cause for mantism that is uncompensated mantic moment usually demonstrated by atoms having odd number of electrons okay so that's all for now and in the next class we will study the other type of magnetism today this is enough thank you